All right, we are live for a midday Mike and Mario show. Excited to be back. Looking forward to connecting and trying to make sense of all this craziness out here. More than enough stories to touch on. But before we do so, Mario, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, uh, Mike, and I hope you're doing well as well. Yes, I am fine. And this week has been extremely busy, to say the least, on both our end, I'm sure, trying to process things and try to share our two cents on stuff. So let's, uh, for those that are tuning in, feel free to throw out thoughts, ideas, suggestions in the comment section. We'll jump on those. But let's, uh, I guess, go back towards the beginning of the week and begin assessing how we arrived at this current point on Friday and possibly talk about where we're going to head in the future. And so um, looks like Putin decided to officially pull the trigger by creating two nation states, ultimately, and then furthering his troops in towards that region and beyond and all the things that come with that. But one of the things that uh, I guess is no longer of importance happens to be, you know, the co current health situation is out the door and in comes a new <laughs> uh, narrative in regards to the crisis in Ukraine and things like that. But Mario, give us a quick assessment on what you've seen and how you've processed things. Well, you know, you said uh, there's a lot of craziness going around, but I, I look at the world and everything looks the same. People mm -hmm. are still the same. Right. Uh, I played golf the other day. <laughs> you know, all is well with the world. But if you watch the mainstream media and you, you read the newspapers, which I try to avoid, uh, yes, you think that everything's going crazy. And uh, as for Putin, uh, you know, pulling... Uh, the trigger uh i'm not sure you, you know and I, I i spoke about that yesterday and you get a, a lot of people that uh, don't understand and they they think uh you're a putin apologist but uh, uh it looks it, it's weird because it, it's also to do with the monetary system you say something that people are not used to and they mm -hmm. think oh you're crazy but you know geo politics i have my degree in international relations mm -hmm. uh a ba with economics so i mean i have followed geopolitics for many many years and uh from what i understand that is happening uh in that part of the world is that um obama instigated a a coup d'etat in 2014 with the soros foundation yeah. they brought in uh, their uh, puppets into the Ukraine. And uh, around that time, 2014, uh, these uh, separatists in uh, Donbass region, uh, uh, the region has a lot of Russian speakers, ethnic Russians, probably more than 50%. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were attacked. They broke away from this new regime, this instigated by a coup. Yeah. And they've been at war, the, these two regions since 2014 uh, i watched a video la uh, last year uh, about uh, that region by bald and bankrupt i highly recommend bald and bankrupt on youtube yeah. he was in donbass and it was a war zone and uh i actually saw he made a little vi a clip today on instagram right uh, bald and bankrupt and he was in kiev in maidan the main square and he said uh and he's not taking sides, but he said, there's nothing going on here. He said, there might be a, a, some skirmishes up north, north of uh, Kiev. And, and uh, also, uh, I saw a commentator on Twitter. His name is Pepe Escobar. He's yeah. actually Brazilian, and he's quite uh, well-respected geopolitical analyst. He writes for the Asian Times. Yeah, And he said yesterday that that region in eastern eastern ukraine hasn't been as peaceful since the last 24 48 hours uh, it's been the most peaceful since 2014 because really? actually um yeah they're getting help now from uh, i guess uh putin and, and the russians and uh so i think uh the powers that be exploit the public's uh, and I don't want to sound, uh, you know, all wise and everything, but the public right. ignorance about geography and right. history. And, and it's so easy to do. Right. Very easy to do. And so once you sent me that video on Instagram, it, made, it got me to thinking about, OK, and so in that particular region there, you know, if Kiev is so calm in regards to the center area. And he said north of that region, that's where he's hearing about, you know, uh, Russian forces and things like that. But it's calm in that main part there. But the mainstream news, once again, will have you believe in like, you know, Ukraine is a complete 
disarray. Like, you know, they're showing, you know, and it brought back, it brought back the, the, the memory of in early 2000, or I'm sorry, 2020, when the whole health situation jumped off, how we saw videos of the worst cases, the worst case of people falling out in the streets. And, but that was just to set the narrative. And so with that whole Ukraine situation, I was like, okay, well, I can see how, how, how impactful media can be in portraying the image that they want to put out there. And of course they want it to be the worst of worst so that it furthers the actions that the Western governments will take against Russia while in actuality, it's all about the de-dollarization process. And so we're going to touch on a lot of those articles as well. So, but yeah, you know, it's one thing, that's why I said, you know, something's wrong with this whole narrative and I hope to, through alternative media, we're going to get to the bottom of it. So as best we can. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I noticed uh, I went to a shop uh, nearby and they sell newspapers. I didn't buy a newspaper, but they have this picture of this woman and you've probably seen her too. And oh. it seems to be the, you know, the bloody oh. face. And you kind of wonder uh, why would someone that's been hurt like that be posing for a photo? <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Oh my goodness! So it's all about it's like the Chinese. Uh, wasn't the they showed in the beginning two years ago the Chinese people dropping on the streets or something? Yeah, it's yeah. The same thing. This woman and she's smiling, you know. <laughs> um, and how do we know when that could be in Syria? You know, that, that could have been five, ten years ago. Like you know, who yeah, knows? That could have been, been a little bit, a different time frame. It could have been in 2014, or it could have been in 2014 or uh, f since then in that region of Don Donbass and Donetsk. Yeah. But uh, it's not in Kiev, you know, but <laughs> most people will see that and they think, oh, this is in Kiev. Yeah. And then, of course, they'll say Putin, you know, he's such a, he's such a, you know, that uh, he's causing all this. So you got the same lady here or different. Like, so this looks like the same lady in a sense, but I'm not sure if it is, but it, it just shows that, you know, with, through, photography video you name it and you give a, a a juicy headline you know the western world like man putin is a savage he's over there destroying people's lives and okay <laughs> but yet there's more to the story let's get to the full let's get to the full uh shebang but since then in response to uh what we've been told is happening in ukraine it went from just a small you know predominantly russian based area on the eastern side and we're told that they're bombing and i even talked about yesterday how uh, the Russian uh, military mentioned that it was a total of 83 targets hit as of yesterday. And so I don't know what exactly that's all about. But if it, if that's true, and that was from uh, Walter Bloomberg's Twitter hit handle. So in your opinion, if that is true, wh where else was the Russian forces probably going? What were they targeting? And I have my suspicions, as I mentioned, that biolab stuff and whatever, whatever. But what are your thoughts on that, if that is true? Well, uh, according to... Uh... The Russians and Putin, and I'm not saying I believe them, but this is what he's saying, that uh, since 2014, Kiev has been like a, under the leadership of fascists, really. Mm -hmm. And that these people, they're the ones who have been fighting with the Russian ethnic separatists in the East. They're the ones who have been bombing each other. Uh, so the people in the East as well, I think in Donbass and Donetsk, They've been bombing uh, back, but mm -hmm. uh, so I think these uh, 83 targets is probably uh, the Russians outside Ukraine, yeah. uh, Putin's forces, targeting the people that are hitting the people in Donetsk and uh, uh, Donbass. And that's why Pepe Escobar yesterday tweeted that it has it's the first a day in eight years that they've ha actually had some peace in yeah. Donbass and Donetsk. And, and uh, I can, I believe that because I, I watched Baldwin bankrupt. He travels all mm -hmm. around this part of the world. And he was there in Ma March last year in yeah. Donbass and Donetsk. And uh, he, he showed us and he actually spoke to a, a grandmother uh, out. And she said, I got hit by shrapnel. Uh, you know, people have died in this city. And she said, it's uh, our masters from both sides, and, and, you know, fighting each other, and we yeah. are just victims. So that's what it's about, yeah. and I think it's been going on for eight years, and now it's escalated. And uh, like you said, the de-dollarization de is probably an excuse as yeah. well to make this crisis seem bigger uh, than it is right. so that you can... Uh, 
justify the the sanctions mm -hmm. uh, and everything else. And and I know saying this, a lot of people might think, uh, "What are you talking about?" You know, Putin apologists. No, I'm just trying to observe right. and uh, see what's going on. Right, very true. And of course, it's always about you know what they want us to perceive as reality when that actuality is something much, much, much bigger at play. And of course, you know, the whole rethinking dollar concept was about to you know was trying to narrate the events as they unfold as to how the world rejects the dollar, moves away from the dollar. And so the sanctions brought on by pretty much all G7 nations, you know, one bit by bit, you got more nations jumping on, but none of the real true key nations that really make a difference, i.e., China. Because uh, they don't appear to be jumping on the bandwagon uh, against Russia. They've actually come out and apparently, apparently they're going to be supporting or not condoning or not uh, condemning, rather, uh, Putin's actions. And so as of right now, China and Russia, they've been working together for quite some time for this moment in time. And it so happens that the cover up might be the whole Ukrainian crisis. But, you know, Xi and Putin are moving forward. And so when it comes to the sanctions, um, the, the main threat, I think, was about a day or two ago was that. Uh, sanctions will cut off and cripple the uh, Russian economy. We're going to hit them so hard and and make sure they can't, you know, do whatever they're continuing to do. We're going to hinder their military, hinder, you know, all that stuff. But then I talked about how they've been preparing for this. So they have their two primary methods, the SPFS, which is their own SWIFT alternative. It's already operational within the country. And then they have their own financial payment network in the Mir card system as well for their uh, for their uh, for their people, and so they are well beyond prepared for this transition. So sanctions won't impact it at all, in my opinion. It'll, it'll cause a little bit of a hiccup, but it won't hurt them. But then they're trying to use a swift narrative, and of course, I don't think that's going to work either. But do you think the Western world is afraid of actually pulling a swift card officially or trying to, and basically which would expose the dollar, the petrodollar system? Because at that point. You know, Putin would only just say, hey, OK, we got all the energy we need over here. And now we want, you know, gold for it. we want nothing but rubles or euros or or or, or, or yuan or whatever. What, what are your thoughts? As for the sanctions, uh, if you notice, Germany, they announced that uh, 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 made an announcement about Nord Stream 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But don't forget that Nord Stream 1 is still operating, and Nord Stream 2 uh, wasn't operating anyway, so they just said, oh, we're not going to uh, go ahead with it for now. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just saw a headline uh, from from the Germans saying that it's very difficult to take uh, Russia off SWIFT, and, mm -hmm. and it would cripple Germany and, and some major European countries as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh and then you see a tweet, oh, the Germans and the Italians, you know, uh, typical. But now we, we saw a, a headline saying that the U.S. government is not sanctioning uh, Russian energy sales because yeah. uh, they don't want to hurt uh, consumers. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I think, uh, like you said, uh, Russia has all the cards. Uh, Russia is uh, the biggest country in the world geographically. Mm -hmm. It has its uh, natural resources are <laughs> beyond belief, and it has the least uh, government debt to GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in great shape, and, and I think I spoke, yeah, I think I spoke about this a few weeks ago. They they announced uh, I think it was a Russian uh, politician in the Duma. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he talked about having a uh, crypto gold backed U one uh, mm -hmm. no. A ruble, no, ruble. Yeah. ruble cryptocurrency. So yeah, they're looking at that, I think. Yeah. And uh, you sent me something before we started that the British are trying to. Uh, yeah, let me uh, grab that real quick. Convinced the Europe, the the Germans and the Italians to cut the Russians off swift. Uh, I'm not sure they'll be successful. And yeah. but like you said, even if they are, you know, Putin will go okay, no, <laughs> right. whatever. <laughs> And that's the thing, you know, the fact that China and Russia have been looking to move away from the dollar dominance, it, it only plays into their interest to further what they've already been working towards, where it hinders the West because, you know, as of right now, the West knows that the rest of the world is already ready to move on from the dollar. And so it's more so smoke and mirrors, I think, like the West knows what's what's coming. And I think with this whole energy situation where by them not imposing you know uh restrict or sanctions rather on the energy sector in particular is more proof that 
they want to have the tough talk and they'll sanction everything else but the primary driver of what makes the world go round, which is energy. But uh, we'll find out. But here's our article that you were referring to a minute ago. And so the SWIFT, SWIFT, SWIFT. So according to them, the SWIFT is their last tool, their last weapon to really stick it to Russia <laughs> as if they uh, uh, are really concerned with that. Because I think as long as Xi and Putin have a – and that's why I don't want to sound, wanted to make it seem like I'm like for Russia and Putin to execute this, but it's inevitable. So I don't want to sit up and, and pretend like, you know, I don't want to lose, you know, the Royal Reserve currency status because I think ultimately it's already been lost. But it's more so how – do you how do you uh, reveal that to the world without it causing like complete pandemonium at the yeah. same time? And I think a little bit to some extent, Russia and China, they've known for for years that this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think, in know, wait, uh, it was uh, like a, a reminder uh, or like an alarm to yeah. China because they had a lot of mortgage backed securities. And if it hadn't been for the bailouts, they would have lost a lot of money. So, and I think uh, Russia is known for for many for over a decade, even before 08, that and they started buying a lot of gold in 06, that this was going to happen. So maybe this is this crisis is just like for for public consumption, mm -hmm. the, for not not just for the people in the West who are who are already suffering and going to suffer more, unfortunately. Because of rising prices and uh, ultimately a collapse of, uh, of the currency system, but it will also impact people in China and Russia. So right. maybe they are also trying to rally the public behind them in those countries, and and they're trying to do the same here. And, and uh, the politicians make it seem that they're really fighting. Right. Uh, it, it could all be theater. Uh, Right. Cool. The, we, we don't know. But just to give you just to highlight uh, some of the uh, some of the recent um, negotiations that have been taking place on the Eastern Hemisphere, I pulled I just typed in some key buzzwords, I think, that flies under the radar radar. But uh, let me share this with you guys right here. So this is just stuff that pops up that I've been talking about forever. Russian China to extend currency swap agreement to lessen dollar dependence. So this is an article from, you know, four or five years ago now. So this is yeah. stuff that they've been working on. <laughs> and we've seen China as well in the last year doing agreements with other countries in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. We've seen in the last month the president of Argentina and the president of Brazil went to visit Putin. Right. At the Kremlin in Russia, uh, and uh, yeah, all these bilateral uh, agreements to mm -hmm. trade uh, with their own currencies instead of the dollar—they're all springing up. And I, I, I think uh, Swift, uh, yeah, it would be probably be uh, backfire even more. It would be even worse for the West, right. and it would uh, accelerate. Uh, and I, I think, think what's happening, yeah, what, what, yeah. All the new sanctions here, even though I don't think these sanctions they're imposing right now, are, it's just for political uh, yes, for uh, sure. capital. Uh, I don't think they're going to have much of an impact, but uh, it's just another nail in the coffin of the uh, petrodollar for right. the de-dollarization. Right. So between the SWIFT alternatives, you know, every you know every region pretty much have their own. You got the bilateral or trade agreements. You know, every key every key country that they have been doing business with for the last decade have all probably signed up in some capacity to be able to just exchange goods for goods or currency for currency, currency swaps amongst a lot of nations. So that is more than enough to show that the dollar's dominance is no longer what it used to be and pose that much of a threat on this new next world order that they're trying to create without the dollar. So that's established. Okay. So just real quick, I see a super chat when you answer that, but I want to touch on this little headline here because this is something I think which is which has just come about today that you brought to my attention about the China state banks restrict financing for Russian commodities. So this is in a nutshell, you know, two big banks in China have denied Russian financing in dollar credit terms, but then they'll extend it in a, what appears to be yuan credit terms or, or something of that magnitude. So basically not using dollars to do business amongst each other when it comes to financing or helping companies finance through credit swap lines or whatnot. So once well, again, it's just another thing, the, no dollars won't be used. Well, that headline is like uh, 
on you yahoo finance people will see that and say oh look the chinese are uh, also uh, uh punishing the uh, russians but mm -hmm. actually if you read through the whole thing like you said they're gonna do it in uh renminbi the mm -hmm. it's to do with letter of credit the russians are probably happy about that because uh, they don't want the dollars uh, we know that uh, their uh, foreign reserves in dollars have dropped from a few mm -hmm. hundred billion to like uh, eight billion or maybe less, which for them is nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, you want denominated letters of credit are still available for some clients subject to approval from senior officials. So you want denominated letters are available, but not the U.S. dollar. So that's just more evidence that, you know, de-dollarization is in full effect. Ukraine is more so a cover up for the transition. And I, I want to definitely just answer this uh, super chat real quick before we uh, forget about it. Give me one second. Chris, appreciate you, my man. It says, uh, if Biden really wanted to sanction Russia, why didn't he take Russia off the Swiss system? <laughs> so I think that talk that, that is about a lot of things we've been covering. So I don't think uh, I would imagine they know that, you know, removing Russia from the Swiss system is not that much of a threat just because of all the things we've touched on. And ultimately, it will probably be in the best interest of Russia to execute their agenda of de-dollarizing entirely because they're going to then probably ask for some type of payment for their energy in something else and demand the world to recognize that. So it just puts more of the pressure dollar in a very tight spot, in my opinion. So but the other reason I think why they haven't pulled the SWIFT yet, or they might, is because of uh, Germany and some other European countries. There's not a, not agree no agreement there between yeah. what is supposed to be the NATO countries. But we we spoke about earlier about the uh, the British trying to push push uh, the SWIFT ban. So we'll have yeah. to wait, uh, Chris, and see. You know what? I'm not sure. It, it, you know, earlier I think it was last week, end of end of last week, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Macron went to Russia to talk things over and every sentence. So, you know, every, so right now France is silent. I haven't heard nothing about France passing sanctions or not like that. So France is silent to my knowledge, which got me wondering what's going on there because I think, you know, the French were pissed off. Remember months ago, we we're talking about uh, how the U S the U S UK and Australia did that little nuclear sub mm. and France was pissed off. So <laughs> it looks like France, I don't know if they deviating away from course or what, but yeah. France That's is not on board. Point there about uh, that Australian deal. And uh, they, I think uh, Macron and Putin, the statement from their meeting, they, they met on that. Uh, they sat <laughs> on that. that long table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was that, uh, Europe and uh, Russia want to work out a new security agreement, which sounded like they wanted to uh, reform or scrap NATO. So, mm. yeah, it's interesting. So that's just something worth keeping an eye on because we could be throwing another wrench in, in, in this whole situation. Here's that. You know, they're sitting <laughs> across the table from each other. <laughs> but, <Right>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was interesting. But anyway, so let's jump in. You know, feel free to throw out more thoughts more chat you know what are more topics and we definitely got to touch on uh recent market activity as far as the metals are concerned so let me just put this up here what we're looking at as of right now and according to what i'm seeing it looks like you know for whatever reason i guess bad news has turned the market you know the metals price down a little bit or the paper slamming or whatnot but midweek to, to me midweek was a turning point when everything initially jumped off and the digital asset space tanked and gold and silver went the complete opposite. And I've commented on that because I took a snapshot and put it on the social media sphere, basically saying that at this moment, because of all the fear, Meadows is doing what I guess it was intended to do, yeah. which would be a flight to safety. So the, 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 the you know, I would not say this the wrong way, but the old money, the real money, they know where to run to while they'll play around in certain areas, but they know where to run to. And of course, things have reversed since then. The markets were down, but yeah. now they're up all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yesterday, uh, like European early morning, like prior to the U.S. coming in, I made my video. Gold was at 1940. Silver was at 25. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I published my video, gold went up further to 1970. Mm -hmm. And then the U.S. came in. And I think uh, people realized as well, because if you look at the, the sanctions, the Americans, they've... Uh, exempted the energy sector mm -hmm. and uh i think the markets don't really buy 
maybe uh, that it, there's going to be a, a major, major war out yeah. there. Uh, I mean, if you can't even impose sanctions, are you going to really try and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, fight Putin uh, kinetically? And maybe that's why gold and silver have pulled back. I'm sure there's been a little bit of manipulation. Uh, but uh, the reason for having gold and silver, yes, they d they should act as safe havens in, in times of crises like mm -hmm. this. But uh, nothing's changed on the uh, inflation side. And, right. and we've even seen uh, the ECB and, and Fed officials now coming out that they're going to have to keep an eye on, on the geopolitical crisis that mm -hmm. they it could affect uh you know their policy and by affecting their policy it means that they could be less hawkish <laughs> despite right. the fact the fed uh, cpi has been above four percent since may last year and they haven't done one bit they've left rates at zero and, and they're still printing money they mm -hmm. might be tapering but they they've they've created a they did 171 billion of qe right. since the beginning of um yes yeah, it's the beginning of the year Right. And since then, like I, I saw some some uh, figures thrown out there about, you know, regardless of what they're saying, their balance sheet is still growing. And so yeah, that's still part, yeah. being overly accommodative <laughs> to speak. So they're literally, as I always say, they're probably, you know, stalling buying time. But, you know, everybody knows there's no unwinding this. And as you just look at all these down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, it's still trending up. So exactly how are they going to pull us off? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I think they're literally probably waiting on some further developments from the Western Hemisphere or the Eastern Hemisphere, rather, to make mm. it uh, a little bit easier to use an excuse as to we tried, we wanted to, but you know, you know, we sh we shouldn't have, you know, backfired. Yeah. We removed Russia from the SWIFT yeah. system and it backfired, and now we gotta, you know, <laughs> support the yeah, dollar. Yeah, now just to share something here about the stock markets. You know, yesterday uh, they were heavily down before the official open. They mm -hmm. continue to go lower during the day. And, and now today, of course, they're rallying quite strongly. You see the Dow is up almost 2%. S&P. Yeah, do me a favor. Percent. Zoom in, if you don't mind. Zoom in so we yeah. can get uh, those. Yeah, figures so together. there you go. Yeah. So there you go. The Dow is up 1.75. But what I wanted to note is year to date, we're still, you know, the NASDAQ is still down 13%. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the way we have to look at this, it's uh, this is going to be more... Uh, a fact of selling the rallies instead of buying the dips. Now, right, I, I right. think the uh, stock market, I mean, the S&P and Dow topped at the beginning of the year. The NASDAQ, I think, topped in November last year, and it's leading the way down. And uh, I'll just show you also, uh, I'm going to put it here, the the Russian, <laughs> the mm, Russian yeah. stock market. That's been hurt, hit hard. Let me yeah. bring it down. Where is it? But today they're up 20 and 26 percent. Yesterday right. they were down over 30 percent. So there's a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. uh, out there. And uh, but one thing I would say is that the shift, I think, from. Uh, uh, stops sharing the shift from like. Uh, how can I say technology, the Nasdaq, S&P bonds. The shift from that it has been happening since the beginning, uh, end of last year, beginning of this year. Yeah. And I think it's going to continue. And, and uh, I wouldn't be discouraged by the uh, price action in gold and silver. A lot of it is paper. And uh, it's still really hard. Not hard, but you pay a big premium to buy the real thing. Right. And so just to shine more light on how you don't necessarily trust what you are being told or what your eyes see. Just look at the long-term trajectory of things. Let's actually just thumb through uh, what's happening. Let me pull this up real quick. Sorry. So let's just thumb through the historical aspects. of. So this is gold priced in the Russian ruble. And so as of right now, it's at an all-time high. So right now, you know, holding precious metals in Russia has done you more, uh, uh, more of a, has benefited you more rather than the Russian ruble Price, you know, measured in, you know, die in fiat currency terms as far as the Dixie is concerned. But as of right now, we're 154,828 Russian rubles for, you know, one ounce. So once again, if you've been a holder in Russia, you know, you have been somewhat protected or yeah. shielded from financial devastation. <laughs> well, even in Japan uh, this week, we made an all time high. Yeah. I suppose in, in Japanese yen. 
Yeah, I, mean, I would say every country <laughs> outside and, the dollar uh, terms. Or, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, in the UK, uh, we got up to uh, like 1,460 yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and uh, the, the high is about 100 pounds higher. And it was more to do with uh, Brexit a little bit. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, there's a bit of uncertainty uh, beginning of end of 19, 2019, beginning of 2020. Yeah. And, and that drove our currency down a lot. But uh, yeah, we... Holy we are very much near all-time highs and a lot of them even like look at the yen yeah yeah so i mean just just pick a thought a country it's good to say beyond the dollar federal beyond a federal reserve note you know they're already at or approaching near uh, all-time highs and, and so are we as well but yet some yeah. have already exceeded it so uh let me thought another country what's another good country that uh any other g7 nations Let's yeah i mean look at uh let's look at uh, Australia. Australia, Aussie yeah. dollar, you know, Australian dollars almost near. Let me look at I mean, the last. They're year. all, uh, you know, they're all sinking versus gold. Yeah. Look so it looks like, you know, as, as of if I do the one year chart, you know, we're yeah. close to 2700 for an ounce of gold in Australian dollar. So all time high as well. So go back uh, 10 years. Let's see. Go back 10 years. Let's see what we got here. So they're all time uh, high. Yeah. Very much near there. So 2799. So, this, this, yeah, this shows that this is not just a dollar thing because a lot of times people associate uh, a strong gold price with a weaker dollar. Yeah. But it's a strong price versus all fiat. Right. And so just real quick, look at Argentine peso. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is going to the So this is literally going to the moon. In a, in a, oh, in a, Mar Mars, no? Yeah, going, going past the moon to tomorrow. Yeah, so two thousand two, so two hundred and two thousand pesos would get you one ounce of gold. So, so yeah, so so we know where to be in times of uh, for to protect yourself in times of shelter. Take shelter from a financial standpoint, but uh, just don't look at the price. Look at the possession side of things because everywhere everywhere around the world, I'm assuming a lot of other people, maybe millions of other people, would love to be able to grab a hold of metals at a more reasonable price given the current circumstances they're in so just be grateful that uh as of right now the prices are still cheap or you know not, you know figuratively speaking so it gives you time to get your weight up so anyway let's uh let's jump into some thoughts and uh comments from the chat feel free to throw out um thought idea or anything like that and we can share our two cents on it so let's uh jump into the chat and see what's going on out there let me read it real quick uh, somebody said a Turkish lira. Uh, LBP want to see the Turkish lira. I can bring it up. Um, I can bring the Turkish lira versus the dollar. I don't know if you. All right, go ahead. Bring go ahead and bring it up. Go ahead and bring it up, and I'll try to find now, this. Let me just one. try to find it here. Hold on, I'll get it. Uh, my system. Turkish lira. So here is the gold in Turkish lira. Oh well, that's fine. Then that should be enough, I guess. So let me pull this up real quick. Here we go. So. Uh, once again, it's going past Mars or yeah. heading towards Mars. So it's, it's so we're in. So in the last, especially so what I've noticed, a common theme of all these graph of these charts is that since 2020 and onward, due to economic conditions, un amount, un un unimaginable amount of you know uh, fake currency created creation, gold and silver has pretty much done tremendously well in terms of those uh, currencies. So as we can see, it's all way up to the top. It is not at its well, all very high, and it's all it's done well versus uh, the dollar as well because we were at uh, prior to 2019, 2018, uh, gold was like languishing uh, between 1350 and uh, mm -hmm. let's say, well, it had resistance. Uh, be, well, it was languishing between 1200 and 1350, and yeah. even in March 2020, we dropped to. 1450 in gold and uh 12 dollars in silver yeah. so it, it they have done well as well right now here is something that i'm curious to get your thoughts on which is a who knows how things will go ahead because nothing really makes sense the fact that you know there's so much war talk but yet the markets are in a green apart from metals but look at this look at this graph here let me let me bring this back to our so in 2021 in December, this is a, this is a Turkish lira in silver, <laughs> and we see the the drop from 371 at its peak down to 244, and I think that might be an isolated event 
in well, Turkey. I can tell you what that was. That yeah. was when uh, Turkey came out and, and they said they're gonna uh, uh, give uh, savers uh, in, in Turkish lira. They're gonna hedge. So uh, let's say if you put your money in the savings account mm -hmm. and, and the lira dropped against uh, the dollar, yeah. they would uh, compensate you for that drop plus the interest. So they instituted this new plan. So yeah. the lira there really went up against the dollar, and that's why that happens. Okay. But it, it's, I mean, now it's starting to fall again, the lira against the dollar and silver. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think this scheme uh they introduced last year when the they kind of saved the turkish lira for in the short term is going to work yeah and uh the turkish government now is trying to get the public to uh sell their gold the the turks have generational uh, gold saved uh, yeah. i think it's worth about 250 billion dollars of gold they've got stashed away but yeah. i don't think uh people are going to be that silly to give away their gold for for paper yeah. Now, I mean, so, OK, the question I want to throw out there. So this is silver in dollar terms. And so to go back to, you know, 2020, February 2020. And then, of course, March is when the world pretty much shut down and we saw silver go from what was about eighteen dollar ish at that time down to that at twelve dollars and forty seven cent, according to this. And that was a complete sell off. Everything went down. Everything went down. So what's the probability of another market correction occurring in your opinion, similar to what we saw in 2020, March, April's time frame, where it was a, a massive sell-off occurring again, and it probably driving down the spot price of silver, gold and everything else, along with equities markets down to that 12, 13, 14. Is that something that's possible? Or given the current conditions, East West tugging around the de-dollarization process, is it too late for prices to go that far? Well, anything's possible, of course, but what I've noticed this year, and I've been speaking a, a about it in my videos, is that the, the stock market, as you saw there, year to date, they're all down. Uh, you know, the NASDAQ is down about 13%, yet gold and silver are actually up on the year. So they're going like a different direction. Commodities are, are up like about 10% this year, the, the general commodities uh as per the CRB, probably. So it, it, is, it seems to be different this time. But like mm -hmm. I said, anything's possible. But if we do get like a, a crash of 30% uh, over a month in the stock market, like we did in March mm -hmm. of 2020, yes, there could be a little bit of liquidation in gold and silver and commodities. But I, I think it would be short-lived mm -hmm. and it would be from a higher level. Um, that is possible but what seems to be happening to me that seem to be happening now in my opinion is that people are drifting away from the uh you know uh in fashion uh assets mm -hmm. uh into uh, real things and it's being done gradually so i'm not sure if we're gonna get a huge crash uh it, no. it's probably gonna be because i think someone i don't know who said that it could have been michael oliver that uh it was only the 1929 uh crash that started a bear market mm -hmm. he said that usually when you have a stock market crash it's not the beginning of a bear market so he said bear markets start slowly and then they like they're really frustrating and they last years so this is where we could be now so if you look at 1987, there was a 20% crash and it, it didn't start a bear market. 2020, there was a 38% crash uh, in a month mm -hmm. and we didn't have a bear market. We've made new highs. So he could be right. So watch it. And so those, those, those sudden dips and then rallies most recently were subject to a large accommodative policies. <laughs> and so, 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 so was in 1987 because Greenspan, he just, uh, he just, uh, taken over as chairman and, uh, he, he, uh, that was the first time he used a Greenspan put, mm -hmm. uh, in 1987. It, yeah. And that's right. Subject to uh, stimulus. So, so here, so, so to, to, to add more to that, like, so we'll never, we, we don't know what could be, it's a possibility, but then the question will be. How will central banks respond? 
do would they want it to occur so it makes their transition easier towards what they were trying to usher out the new rebranding of the currencies and it, it gives them the ultimate excuse to throw out the cbdc's as a way of shifting the game and injecting currency directly to the people with controls and stipulations and all the stuff that comes with that or they can just say okay it's time we've got all we can out of this system let's just let this thing crumble and we can use whatever narratives whether it be war we can bring russia we, we have more than enough evidence now to say that you know it won't point back to us meaning the federal reserve because we were we were attempting to they get they gave us 90 days of, of of talk saying we were trying to but you know this happened that happened that happened whatever or once again I, that that cyber event is still on the table and it's a, of, of course a lot of other things but let me let me share something with you from yes my little rant yesterday at how somehow some way we went from being threatened by russia to now biden has been presented with an option for massive cyber attacks against Russia. <laughs> so how do we go from wanting to protect ourselves from Russia to where we gonna throw it back at them? And I talked about how that, you know, to me, don't that don't sound right. It lets me know that possibility that, you know, all these events that are occurring, ransomware attacks could actually be done by us on the home front here and, and excuse of pointing to Russia. But what are your thoughts about this? <laughs> well, I guess now they have an excuse uh, because they're saying that rush uh putin invaded ukraine mm -hmm. so uh and uh even if it if it was uh if it came out that it was a, a russian cyber attack on the west it probably would have been done by them anyway <laughs> <laughs> oh man so yeah very interesting so let's uh as a security wind out i don't see many questions i see a lot of back and forth and uh for those tuning in hit make sure you hit the thumbs up button show your support for the channel um, but what I want to do is looking ahead, the framework's been set, you know, apparently Russia is in Ukraine, sanctions are passed, SWIFT is being thrown around, we'll see. So next week, what are we anticipating? Like, what's the possibility that, that, that other NATO nations, due to the energy concerns of not being able to heat their own nations in the wintertime, leads to a shift in NATO or, or what? Like, what, what are your thoughts? What do you, what do you foresee coming possibly ne heading into next week? I don't know. Uh, my, loaded right there. My, my feeling is that it's going to come out that um, all these this talk of acting tough on Russia and the sanctions, it's going to be seen to be really toothless. Mm -hmm. And uh, I doubt they're going to Im implement SWIFT. So it might sound, sound like a good thing, but it, it, it's just another Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, because and what does that mean? Well, last year, uh, U.S. left Afghanistan after 20 years, mm -hmm. and it was a really botched up operation. Uh, and now, uh, Russia is kind of imposed its will in the Ukraine, mm -hmm. and uh, the West can't do anything about it. So it, it just goes to show how the uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. and NATO's power is waning. Yeah. yeah, that's what I see coming forward. Hmm. Interesting. So here's a little, here's a question here that I think, which we kind of, we touched on earlier, but it says, when will precious metals go up? And my response is they already have. Just look, yeah. just look beyond uh, dollar, yeah. dollar terms. Like look at like, yeah. all the well, even, in, even in dollar terms. I mean, I think we started the year at, uh, I mean, 1820, we went into the 1700s and now we're near 1900. We even almost went up to uh, 2000 yesterday. So yeah. uh, people need to stop worrying about uh, precious metal, gold and silver. Yes, it's nice for it to be going up, but they, they are insurance against um, inflation and currency yeah. debasements. And uh, you, it, it's not like a get rich quick scheme. Right. where you buy it and you sell it why are you going to sell it for paper if the paper is going to zero so people need to yes i do cover the the price and the charts and technical analysis and that's interesting yeah. but uh the, in the end of the day uh, you shouldn't worry about that it, it's insurance and uh yeah the bankers they they play their paper games but when it will suit them they're gonna have to let it go up it, it's like everything if you manipulate and and control the price eventually you're going to create shortages and higher prices yeah it's, it's here's a question here that uh let me see here so 
I remember hearing about this a while ago, but I can't find a, a, a legitimate source. But here's the question. It says, uh, uh, it says from Illinois Prepper says, does Ukraine own gold and where is it? <laughs> and so uh, long story short. <laughs> probably. Uh, let's have a look uh, and we can look at gold reserves. Well, so so uh, I remember. I, I would bet uh, I think the U.S. took that already. Yeah, they did. Back in 2014 as a part of that whole coup situation. Yeah. Here's, a, yeah. here's an article in, in, in probably in Russian, but I remember hearing about how uh, they flew out Ukrainian gold. So here's a little. Oh, there you go. So you, I was right. I mean, I, I, I didn't know that story. I just, but I'm looking here that I'll share it afterwards. Go, go, go on with your story. Okay. No, no, I'm just saying that. So I just typed it in just cause I remember 2014, you know, first thing, first thing when, you know, the whole regime changed because mind you, whoever Zelensky is or whoever the president has been since then, they're all puppets. They were put in by the West. And at the same time they put in the puppets, they flew out the gold. So I remember talking about that. So here's a little article talking about their goal was gone, mm. long gone. So anyway, now, go ahead. Let me Mario. share something here. Okay. Uh, hold on. Uh, share screen. Okay. Yeah, there goes. Well, here, here we go. Uh, this is the gold reserves. Uh, so here we go. Uh, gold reserves, right? And then you scroll down here, the major countries. Mm -hmm. The U.S. supposedly still has... 8,133 metric tons at Fort Knox. I'm not right. sure you can trust that. But if you scroll down, uh, Ukraine is not in the top 30. So there yeah. you go. So what, whatever, let me see. Was there a, a confirmed amount? So it says at 2, at 2 a.m. this morning, March 7, unmarked transport plane was on the runway at uh, Boris Paul Airport in East Kiev. According to the airport staff, before the plane came to the airport, four trucks and two Volkswagen minibuses arrived at the truck, license plates missing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So 40 heavy boxes was flown out on the plane. Uh, yeah, maybe, so. I, I guess, uh, what's his name? Obama and Victoria Newland. Yeah. Some of those gold bars. Yeah, somebody got heavy. It wasn't the Ukrainian he, he, people. But. Or he bought like a place in uh, Martha's Vineyard. Because <laughs> he's so become he's a very wealthy man, hasn't he? Oh yeah, oh on yeah. A sal on a salary for for president, right? Should... Yeah. Book deals, speaking engagements. You mm. know, your kids gonna be on special lobbying firms and boards when they get older. So they, yeah, politics does do pay. So crime does pay if you're in the Especially, right game. Especially so, uh, when you steal gold from other countries as well. Right. All in the name of spreading democracy. But uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's get rid of that. We're going to get a lot of stick from, from people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. As always, man, it's good to connect. Definitely keep your eyes prepared, uh, eyes open, ears to the ground, and uh, stay plugged in as best you can. Stay prayed up. Get your weight up. Take advantage of the manipulation while you can because it's your friend helping you further prepare and, uh, yeah, just adjust to this craziness going on out here and enjoy your weekend. So, yeah, um, Manico64 right. on YouTube. Anything, Mario, you, you want to leave us with well, as well? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, you said it right. Prayed up and uh, keep your, you know, stack, keep stacking. Mm -hmm. Prayed up is important as well yeah. because uh, it's a, f it, 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 we laugh and everything, but it's uh, basically good against uh, evil. And it's always going to be like that, but we yeah. got to keep uh, trying to uh, come out with the tr the truth as much as we think it is. Right. You know, we could be hundred uh, percent wrong too, but yeah, but it's it just makes more sense. Feeling. <laughs> yeah, it makes more sense to pro probably be wrong, speculating on all these far left topics yeah, yeah. than just looking at the headlines that's given to us and oh, believing yeah. it as is. That, I'd rather that be photo of that woman that's uh, gone all around the world. Right. <laughs> Right, that photo. So let me see if I still got it. I may not have it. I still have it. I don't have it anymore. But anyway, so as always, appreciate everybody for hanging out with us. Uh, be blessed, be safe, and see you guys later. And uh, yeah, we're back at it next week. It's going to be more stuff to talk about. So definitely, you know, stay plugged in. But be blessed, be safe. Peace.